Hi everyone, Tulak the Barbarian here. I'm coming to you at the beginning of the video to address something right away. This video is not going to be using the Matthew Mercer Bloodhunter class. We only use sources from Wizards of the Coast here that are either officially published or in pending UA waiting to be tested. I know that Matt invented Dungeons and Dragons in 2014 and even had an official book of his homebrew published, but he didn't put Bloodhunter or Gunslinger in that book for some reason. Basically, I have to draw a line somewhere, and if I'm using stuff from Matt Mercer, why wouldn't I use homebrew stuff from anywhere? else there's probably a homebrew class for just about every character that's ever been made and if i was advertising homebrew on the show i'd do it for smaller creators who need the support and backing on their kickstarters matt's doing fine but if you're still mad at me for not using blood hunter i think i've got someone on the phone who might change your mind about that hey matt are you there the name's mccree <laughs> you jokester i'll call you mccree if you want much obliged so basically, I just want to make sure that you're okay with what I said, but I'm not using homebrew from anyone, even you, only using Wizards of the Coast stuff that are in official books or in UA waiting to be tested. A man's gotta have rules. And nobody needs to be mad at me on your behalf because you and I are very good friends and you approved this. Affirmative. Just so that everybody knows this is legit, can you tell me what time it is for you? No. Oh. Thanks, Matt. Now you owe me one. Lady Maria lives inside a clock. Breaks her swords in half and then got them! <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be a master of dual swords. If you're asking whether that means a sword with two sides or a sword in each hand, the answer is yes. Next, we need the blood, even if you don't like using it to add extra oomph to each hit. Finally, after the sword is bloody, we'll set it on fire. Blood is flammable, right? For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy. If I'm not satisfying people who want me to use Mercer's homebrew that show up for every episode, I can at least satisfy the people who yell at me to use the point buy. Get your strength and charisma at 14. I know she's fast, but those swords are pretty long, so they're not going to be finesse, and everybody loved Maria, so the charisma's got to be high too. Dexterity and intelligence at 12. You don't wear heavy clothing, and you gotta understand that eldritch horror lore. Constitution at 11, wisdom at 10. I'd like them both to be higher, but just because you're a waifu doesn't mean you're an anime character. Maria was a human, then she died, so we could go Revenant, but she actually doesn't get resurrected, you fight her in an eldritch abomination purgatory dream state, so that means that we'll just take the dual wielder feat and add one to your AC when you're wielding a weapon in both hands. You can draw two weapons at the same time, and you can dual wield any one-handed melee weapons, just not light stuff, meaning long swords are a go. Use two long swords for when you want to have a sword in each hand, and a double-bladed scimitar for when you have one sword with two blades. I can't homebrew the Raku so we've just got to have two different weapons or I guess three maybe four with the guns four weapons that's it bump your strength and your charisma with your two free points take acrobatics for your skill of choice and the haunted one background for arcana and religion proficiency you've seen and done some stuff you're not proud of I don't know what that is because the game's lore is hella dense and buried in item descriptions but she looks like she's seen some stuff we'll kick things off as a paladin letting you grab two skills from the paladin list like medicine and intimidation you did the healing thing for a while but you've also got the aura of horror around you 24 7 for healing stuff use lay on hands which lets you heal creatures from a pool of hit points equal to five times your paladin level as an action on your turns even removing effects of disease or poison by spending five of those points which is really nice when the city is overrun with a plague to sniff out the creatures responsible for said plague you could use your divine sense to sense celestials fiends and undead within 60 feet of you an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier there's plenty of undead in yarnum but there's also a couple of celestials lingering around second level paladins get a fighting style great weapon fighting lets you reroll ones and twos on damage die with weapons you're wielding two-handed like a double-bladed scimitar that's going to be our raku yo equivalent it deals 2d4 slashing damage and you can make an attack as a bonus action that deals 1d4 slashing damage it's almost like two weapon fighting honestly which we'll also get that soon first though we need some paladin spells cure wounds will let you do some work for the healing church healing 1d8 plus your charisma modifier as an action protection from evil and good will help you deal with all that horrifying stuff in town aberration celestials elementals fiends fey undead all of them are going to have disadvantage on attacks against a creature of your 
your choice, and they can't charm, possess, or frighten your buddy. Aberrations are probably the biggest issue, with giant invisible spider gods hanging off the buildings like lemurs. This will help you deal with them for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. The best paladin spell, of course, is Divine Smite. Adding 2d8 radiant damage to a weapon attack, and an extra d8 of radiant damage to fiends or undead. What kind of damage does blood do? There isn't really an option for that. I'd probably say necrotic or force, but you can't prove it's not radiant. Third level paladins get divine health, making you immune to disease as a character, not a player. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and keep your distance. Let's try and wrap this up by 2021, okay? The end of 2021. I'm also going to be realistic here. You can also choose a sacred oath, and oh boy, I do love that new Watcher oath that deals with aberrations, but Vengeance hits harder, and Maria hits like a blood bank truck with no brakes. You get Channel Divinity in one of two ways per short rest, either making a Vow of Enmity to get an advantage on attack rolls against a creature, or Abjure an enemy, forcing a Wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're frightened and can't move until a minute passes or they take damage. Knowing you, they're gonna take damage lots of damage. Make them take even more damage with Hunter's Mark, a special spell for Vengeful Gals, letting you add an extra d6 of damage with your weapon attacks against them, and you get advantage to checks to track them for up to an hour depending on your concentration. This works really well with two-weapon fighting, since it's not locked to one specific weapon like some of our later spells. Also, it just increases the damage that the sword deals, so you know, blood. But if we want to get really good at two-weapon fighting, we need a two-weapon fighting style, which we currently don't have and actually can't get that fighting style as a paladin, unless. At the fourth level of paladin, we grab the fighting initiate feat for the two-weapon fighting fighting style, which lets you add your ability modifier to the damage of your offhand weapon attacks. Quick refresher on how two-weapon fighting works. You make an attack with your action and an offhand attack with your bonus action. Normally, you don't get to add the ability modifier to that one, but here you get to. With Hunter's Mark up, that effectively makes the damage die a d14, which is pretty meaty. Also, today is November 17th. I'm recording this on November 7th. I don't know if the Fighting Initiate feat got added to Tasha's. Currently, it's Unearthed Arcana. But I've used Unearthed Arcana before, so it's going in this video. All that two-weapon fighting mumbo-jumbo gets even weirder at 5th level of Paladin when you get extra attack, which lets you make two attacks with your action, but doesn't apply to that bonus action attack, so a total of three attacks per round, but you can still bump all of those up with Hunter's Mark. You can't do that with Magic Weapon, because that's a different concentration spell, but that adds one to the attack and damage rolls of one weapon for up to an hour depending on your concentration. It could help you get through the defenses of some more resistant foes in the area. I'd imagine interdimensional horrors summoned with blood and nightmares might resist regular slashing damage. As a Vengeance paladin you also get misty step for free letting you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action in case you need to get in or out or just go a little bit faster generally getting away pretty quickly is pretty useful in yarnum six level paladins get aura of protection letting you and your fellow hunters add your charisma modifier to their saving throws as long as they're within 10 feet of you don't be shy about dinging the beckoning bell it's not because you're weak it's just because games are more fun with friends 7th level Vengeance Paladins get Relentless Avenger, meaning that when you hit someone with an opportunity attack, you can move up to half your movement speed immediately without provoking opportunity attacks yourself, because you cannot get away from Maria, she is too fast, I hate it, sorry, I'm cool, I'm good, I'm good. 8th level Paladins get an ability score improvement, round up that strength and charisma for better damage and saving throws all in one level. It feels really good when you get to raise two modifiers at the same time, especially on a Paladin. Ninth level paladins can learn third level spells. If you want to just open up Maria's speed, haste from the vengeance list adds two to your AC, doubles your movement speed, gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action for one attack, a dash, disengage, hide, or object using action. I'd say that you should use it to attack, four attacks per round is pretty awesome for putting the hurt out. Keep in mind though, you'll have to spend an extra action and reaction stabbing yourself when you drop concentration or the spell ends in a minute, which also doesn't deal damage to her when she stabs herself in the boss fight, it just leaves her open to getting hit. Just another reason she's not a blood hunter, but eh, whatever. You can also use elemental weapon to add a d4 of acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage to a weapon and plus one to the attack rolls. Again, Hunter's Mark is probably better for the damage, but this could help you get things cooking with a fire sword if you want to enter phase three. Tenth level paladins get aura of courage, meaning hunters within 10 feet of you can't be frightened, even if there's some old blood around. Literally every item in this game has blood, either in the name or the description. It's very spooky. 11th level paladins get improved divine smite adding a d8 of radiant damage to every weapon attack you make i think that's why paladins aren't supposed to get two weapon fighting with haste up that's 8d8 plus four times your strength modifier in total damage per round 20 health vials ain't enough you should have brought 50. 12th level paladins get another ability score improvement more strength means more damage and more accurate swings with all of your swords or should i say sword if you break a double bladed sword in half is it two swords or one sword Whatever. The only thing stopping you from shredding things at the moment is your fairly high chance of missing, so that kind of fixes it up. 
13th level paladins get 4th level spells. Locate creature from the vengeance list helps you track down who or whatever you're hunting. Letting you find a specific creature or a creature of a broader type within a thousand feet of you for an hour depending on your concentration. Find out where you need to go, then open up your bloody smites. 14th level paladins get cleansing touch, letting you remove an effect of a spell on yourself or another willing creature an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier. It's basically the spell dispel magic, but it works on every spell with no check required. It's very good and will make you very popular in the healing church. You'll have tons of brainy ladies being like, hey, where's Maria? And then like the hunter will be like, upstairs i'm gonna go kill her sorry 15th level vengeance paladins get soul of vengeance meaning that if someone is in range with you when you have your vow of enmity on them and make a weapon attack you can attack them as a reaction you really can't get greedy when you're going against the dlc bosses maybe the living failures but that's kind of in their name isn't it 16th level paladins get another ability score improvement letting us cap off our strength to get the absolute most potential out of your rakuya with haste up, that's 8d8 plus 20 damage with all of your attacks every round for 10 rounds. There's a reason I went through this game on New Game Plus in a Maria costume. My fights with her did not last very long. 17th level paladins get 5th level spells. If we're calling blood damage radiant damage, then holy weapon is a bloody mess. Adding 2d8 radiant damage to a weapon's attack, making it magical, and shedding 30 feet of light in a very poorly lit game. It lasts for an hour depending on your concentration, though you can end it early to create a luminous or bloody explosion, dealing 4d8 radiant damage and blinding creatures within 30 feet of you if they fail a constitution saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier. Maybe this is deep 2 lock lore, but I only explain how saving throws work on the first spell that uses it in a build and we're at level 17 the girl just hits stuff she doesn't do a lot of saving throws 18th level paladins get to extend their auras with aura improvements meaning hunters only have to be within 30 feet of you to get the buffs from your auras you're so pretty it's all but confirmed that your old boss painted a mannequin to look like you obviously you inspire the best in people 19th level paladins get our last ability score improvement invest in charisma a little bit for plus one to every saving throw for you and everyone you brought into the game with the beckoning bell our capstone is the 20th level of vengeance paladin letting you open up the real final phase thanks to avenging angel this will give you a 60 foot flying speed and creatures within 30 feet of you have to make a wisdom saving throw or they're frightened for a minute or until they take damage you also have advantage on attack rolls against the frightened creatures it lasts for an hour no concentration required mixing this with haste gives you a 120 foot flying speed you might start to hover slowly but you dive in like michael phelps i know he's a speed swimmer but do you know Wu min za off the top of your head I didn't think so. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, did you know that Bloodborne bosses hit hard? Because you should. Every hit you send out deals 2d8 plus 5 damage, with 3 to 4 attacks per round depending on which concentration spell you want to rock, and other options to just make you hit harder if you'd rather do that. You're also incredibly mobile, with haste and a capped off strength score even before you hit level 20, and get a flying speed. Finally, your auras make you and your party members great at resisting saving throws, so all the brain breakers in the area won't be able to drive you mad. For weaknesses, we kind of forgot to grab HP, so you're around 124 total, meaning that you could get killed pretty fast in a meat grinder campaign, especially if your AC's only only 13 if you're wearing studded leather and playing to character. You've got the strength to comfortably wear heavy armor, but that wouldn't look as cool. Finally, paladin spells just demand you concentrate. So even though you've got some great ways to transform your weapons, you can only have one option up at a time. But you can make it rain no matter how you do it. Rain blood, that is. Use the blood you don't want to use. Move really fast and make the area look like the Kool-Aid man got ripped inside out. Just make sure that you're ending things quickly. A drawn out fight isn't something I would be an or fan of. Sorry, a big fan of, not orphan. My bad. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week, or we will in January. I'm taking December off. Still, join the Patreon to vote for a January build, either Spyro the Dragon or Crash the Bandicoot, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.